All right, we should be live. This is the first episode of our March Fishing Madness, and we have Captain Jeff uh, from LuckerDog.com with us here today. We're thrilled thrilled to have you on board, Captain Jeff. Good to be here, guys. Glad I could participate. And uh, Jeff, how are you doing? Yeah, here. All right, can you hear me, Luke? Yeah, man, we got you loud and clear. So we get, we got a real guy here on the show today. <laughs> no, the original real guy. The original man. We've the original real guy. Good to be here. Hey, so tell tell us what's going on behind you and where you are and, and what kind of fishing you do. Tell us uh, tell us everything. Well, I'm Jeff Maggio. They call me the longer dog. <laughs> behind me are my kites. This is like homemade background stuff, so you guys can look like you know we're being nautical and fishy over here. <laughs> um, I've been fishing uh, full-time for 15 years out of Fort Lauderdale. I've been doing it part-time since I was a kid. I'm 46 years old. And uh, 1975, we moved to Fort Lauderdale, and I started fishing around here. And uh, I haven't stopped since. And um, basically right now I specialize in uh, tarpon fishing. Almost everybody calls me now to go tarpon fishing. I'd say it's about 90% of my 90% of my trips. And uh, because of our huge YouTube uh, presence. I get people from all over the world coming down to catch the big silver king. So we're down here, we're running the dog, we're catching the silver king, and uh, we're just trying to be as real as we can. That's awesome, man. And so tell us where uh, where everyone could find you on YouTube. What's the channel? Well, on YouTube, um, you can type in Lunker Dog, you can go to the Mullet Run channel, you can go to the Best Fishing channel, but make it simple on yourself. Go to Google, type in Lunker Dog, the videos will start coming up. We have four or five different channels according to what style of videos they are. Some of it's about our bait, some of it's about our boats, some of it's about just catching fish, some of it's educational. So we have a whole bunch of different channels. So just Google Captain Jeff, Google Lunker Dog. It will come up. Um, start clicking away, and you'll find content that you like. I think you can even probably Google uh, how salt life are you, and you might uh, you might show up. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It should come up because we're about as salt life as uh, we're about as salt life as you can get. <laughs> well, hey, t- tell tell us a good story, man. Like a funny, memorable, one of your best fishing stories at any time in your life. Well, probably the uh, I mean, probably the, the you know one of the best stories that uh, that's come around in a long time is uh, just last year I had a ten year old on the boat named Grant, and uh, he was a big fan from YouTube. And him and his dad would watch the YouTube uh, videos together, and they lived down here in Miami, so it was close to where we fish. Uh, the dad told Grant, you know, to come down to the boat ramp, and they would do some fishing off the boat ramp. He didn't tell the kid that I was taking him fishing that day. So uh-huh. I took, I took, I pull up to the ramp. The kid sees me. He's like Captain Jeff. He jumps on the boat. We take him fishing. The ten-year-old catches a tarpon closer to 200 pounds than 150 pounds. Wow. Yeah, he gets it on a uh, he gets it on a bait caster rod. The fish starts jumping, and more fortunately, it was like a more like a sailfish rod, with real good gear ratio. The fish is jumping. The kid reels, 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 and reels. The line goes, or the leader goes in the rod tip as it's jumping, so the kid could say that he caught it. Then uh, his uncle and his dad pull on the fish for about another two hours, finally getting to the boat, and they can get their photos, so on and so forth. The kid's hooked on fishing. The dad's totally fired up. They've come to all the events. And uh, after that trip, after looking back at it, it really kind of makes me realize why I like doing so much what I do. It's fishing trips like that that, you know, make it all come together. Oh, yeah. And that, that, okay. kid's, that kid's probably still talking about all his classmates and stuff. Man, that's so cool. Talking about it. They're all watching it on YouTube. I think it's got like 120,000 views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Just, yeah, just to have the fame of bonding like that, that's, uh, that is really cool. I think that's what it's all about. I mean, that's how I got involved in fishing. I mean, my mom used to take me, you know, down to the little pond to catch bluegills. Then my dad got into it, they, you know, taught me how to catch the offshore stuff, starting with, you know, bluefin and blue marn and that kind of stuff. But it made, made no difference. I was with my dad. I was with my mom. I was with the people that were, like, into the fishing. Some of my uncles tied at the hip. And it's funny because you'll fish with 30 different kids. And one out of those 30 kids, man, you can just look at him and tell he's not not fishing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I guess I was one of those kids, and obviously you guys, you know, seem to be in, come out of the same, you know, bloodline. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we learned as well from our parents at a young age, too, so uh, that's uh, that, that's the be- definitely the best way to do it, so awesome stuff. 
Any uh, any fish that you haven't caught yet? Any any on your bucket list? Oh, dude, there's so much stuff that I have not caught. Um, I would say, like for instance, I've never really been west of the Mississippi before. Never fished out in Colorado, any streams, no trouts, no salmon, nothing like that. Yeah. Everything I've done has been from Massachusetts, Venezuela, Panama, back to Florida. That's kind of been the area that I've been able to excel in and fish a lot in. But there's so much stuff I've never caught before. Never caught a halibut, never caught a salmon, never caught any type of freshwater trout. I did catch a peacock bass this year with this guy Shane Purcell down here. We did a video together. I caught a peacock bass. That was kind of cool. That's cool. But uh, you know, a lot of people just you know they look at the uh, they look at uh, somebody like myself and just assume that I caught all this stuff. And uh, man, I got a bucket. I got a lot on my bucket list. As a matter of fact, uh, I want to go out to like Utah or something, you know, see some mountains, little streams, get out of the city, and uh, catch some of those like really cool looking trouts with all the colors on them and all that. I see you got some uh, fly rods behind you there. You uh, you you can obviously uh, uh, well I guess those might be a little bit too uh, too uh, too big for uh, catching small trout in a in a pond uh, or in a river. I got eight weight. To, I got eight weight to twelve weight. Anything anything smaller than that, I'm gonna have to borrow something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might have to you might have to lessen that to go after those uh the, those trout in the streams. But uh, fun fun either way. It's funny, you know, uh, you go back eight nine years ago, everybody wanted to fly fish, you know, tarpon on fly, bonefish on fly, some of them crazy nuts were going after permits on fly just all the time, and now maybe one out of twenty trips want to go fly fishing. <laughs> Things change, boy. Oh yeah. Remember, Luke, I, I used to only uh, use uh, bait casters, even uh, even in the mangroves and stuff. I refused to, and I realized how stupid that was. <laughs> <laughs> After a couple of birds nests uh, and the, t the con time I didn't need it, uh, I quickly changed my mind and uh, and went to spin and reel. Well, hey, tell us if there was only one fish left in the world and you had to catch it over and over again, what would it be? It's, without a doubt, no question in mind, it's the tarpon. Yeah. I mean, the tarpon, the most sport, the most diverse, the most challenging, all the way across the board. We fish for tarpon 12 months out of the year down here. We catch them from the little eight-weight fly gear all the way to the 50-pound heavy, you know, spin tackle. Yep. We get them from 5 pounds to 200 pounds. We fish them with little tiny baits that's something you might, you know, catch a bonefish with all the way to like a two-pound mullet, anywhere in between, and the fishing is constantly changing. So you're not doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. There's a whole bunch of different ways to stay on top of them over the 12 months, and it makes it a very unique fish. And it never gets boring because the tarpon uh, is at the top epsilon of sport fishing. So it's going to test you every time you catch it. Yep. Every time you go out you know, to try to catch a tarpon, that fish is going to test you no matter which way you're fishing for them. And it's the beauty of it, and I thank God every day that's the type of trip that I get to do. And to be able to catch them 24-7 uh, every day of the year is pretty doggone cool. Catching 24-7 every day of the year is a very distinguished group of guys down here in South Florida that actually do that. And then to be considered, you know, one of those guys, dude, I mean, it's nice, you know. It immediately gives you a platform to stand on where people say, dude, that's the guy that's putting tarpon in the boat 12 months out of the year, you know? It's a little different. <laughs> but, you know, guy. He's a real guy. That's it, dude. <laughs> real guys doing real things. <laughs> and uh, of, of all the other guys out there uh, like that, who would you like to fish with? Out of the guides or just people I'd like to fish with? Uh, anybody living today? Because I get asked this question quite a bit. And uh, my answer probably for the last 24 months would be Vince Wilfork. You know Vince Wilfork from the Patriots? I know the name, yeah. So why, why, why Vince? Well, he's good looking for one. <laughs> the guy played down here at the U. Yeah. Seems like a real guy. He gets on TV, goes to work every single day like an athlete should go to work. He doesn't play superstar. And if i got to spend five hours with somebody on the front of my boat that I don't know, that I'd like to probably get to know, I think Vince Wilfork would be pretty good. That's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus, 
Plus, the guy played at the U. I've been pulling for the dude for, I don't know, he's been in the pros 13 years. He's at the U for four years. I feel like I know him. Plus, I don't think he's going to steal my spots. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We'll, we'll give him a shout-out and, uh, and, and, uh, and tweet him, and maybe he'll uh, come out there and fish with you someday. But I tell you, out of the pros, out of the pros, that all the people that, you know, that I always wanted to fish with, it's been a dream come true for me. I got to fish with Andy Mill twice in the last two years. Andy Mill is like, if you don't know exactly who he is, Google him. The dude's like Mr. Fly Tarpon dude, like four-time, five-time world champ. He's got all these different things. I got to fish with him twice. I also got to fish with Bill Dance. Cool. I mean, growing up, who in the world would ever think you'd get to fish with Bill Dance? The guy calls me up on the phone and wants to catch Tarpon in downtown Fort Lauderdale. I'm like, I'm pinching myself. Like, is this really true? You know, am I really fishing with Bill Dance? And I was able to do three fishing shows with the guy. How much that was a blast. Yeah. And, you know, and, dude, it's Bill Vance. <laughs> well, he, was, he was one of my favorites growing up. I was a big bass fisherman growing up. And, uh, yeah, his show was one that I caught every week. That's that's awesome to fish with him. Right? How do you, how do you not like Bill Vance? So, anyway, you know, the uh, – the, uh, some of the guys that, you know, you dream about fishing with, I was fortunate enough just to have it happen to me in the last few years. That's cool, man. All right, now comes the competition, my friend. So, as you know, we're going to be giving away $5,000 of our own money to the Wounded Warrior Project. It's something that we believe in a lot, and, and it's enabled all of us, right, on, on this call or whatever, this video chat, to, to do what we do and have our freedom uh, as all the men and women fighting for us. So, what we're going to do is ask seven questions, Captain Jeff, and whoever has the most right out of all the people we interview... We're going to donate part of that $5,000 in your name. So no pressure here. You just give it your best shot. Some of them are multiple choice. Some of them you have to have, to have an answer for. And uh, the first one, I think you're going to get this one. It's just a little bit easier one, hopefully. Number one is where, where can a McFish be found? A McFish. A McFish. McDonald's. There it is. Got the boom. Boom. <laughs> He's on the board. On the board. I'm going to bring my nine-year-old or my eight-year-old over here to answer these questions. Let's step up the game. McDonald's. I, I, I always try to get the easy one out first and make people you know, feel good and confident. So, all right, all right. What is the IGFA's Shark Royal Slam Club? It's a, and he, This is a multiple choice here. Actually, I take that back. It's not. <laughs> so what's the IGFA Royal Shark Club? Yeah, what is, what is the IGFA's... Royal uh, Shark Royal Slam Club. Shark Royal Slam Club. I don't know. If, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint here because that is that's a tough one because I know what the answer is. So how many how many species of shark do you have to catch to be part of it? How about that? Ten species. Dang nine, man! You were close. <laughs> uh, I can. I can think of four that I can catch while I'm tarpon fishing, so that was, you know, the first four were gimmies. All right, so I was one off. Yeah, all right, what's a, what's a family of weak old turkeys called? Giblins. <laughs> Close. A brood. B-R-O-D. Well, these are getting yeah. tough there, Joe. I told you, I told you. See, you know, Jeff, Jeff said, hey, this is too easy, so... All you right. guys realize that this is metropolitan. Four million people live here. If I yell, my neighbor will yell back. <laughs> <laughs> this is a yeah, phone a friend, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, from what kind of craft is a large percentage of moose hunting done from? From a John boat. There it is. A boat. Yeah, small boat. Perfect. Nice. Nice. I see that on uh, Discovery. This guy's good. All right, true or false? The beaver's home is underwater. True. It's actually false. The beaver only enters from underwater. The the home is actually above water. I, I knew that. Oh, you knew that. Yes, because Angelina did a report on it, so and she told us all about that. Well, you were a little late on that one. All right. <laughs> I had I had I had help, but it was late. She could, have, she could have jumped in, man. Hey, right, keep, keep going. Let's get the questions. What do we got? What, what are terrestrials? 
What are terrestrials? Yep, and this is with fish. This is with fishing, by the way. No clue. A type of artificial fly. What? That didn't make any sense. I didn't know that one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> make right. sure everybody else gets that answer. Gets that question. <laughs> I'm going to circle that one. Tell everyone. I'll see if anybody gets it. We got a couple. Uh, we got Lacey, who's a fly fishing captain. We'll see if she gets it. All right. How does a boat or a vessel signal that it is backing up? That's a uh, one honk and backing up by a blast of the whistle. We'll take it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Got a Last one. True. It's a true or false one. The U.S. Coast Guard publishes the charts of coastal waters. It's uh, true. It's false. I don't know who does, but it says they don't. They just do the measurements? Well, whatever. I don't expect much from them. <laughs> <laughs> Government dollars at work. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, hey, uh, Captain Jeff, thank you so much. Please, everyone watching this, go follow him. Lunkerdog.com. Check him out on YouTube. Guys, uh, a real guy, and uh, man, we really do appreciate it. And we hope to meet you someday, and uh, hopefully go fishing with you, and uh, have a have a good old time, man. Yeah, keep up keep up the great videos. Those things are awesome. Yep. Well, th thanks for reaching out to me. I hope this thing works for you guys. Wish you best of luck, and uh, hopefully we do more stuff. I've just completed my first uh, Google Hangout. Nice. <laughs> no no technical glitches or anything, man. This is perfect. My first Google Hangout, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. All right, run that dog. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right.